Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing work on our low poly stylized cottage. This time looking at basic materials and colouring. Do check out the other playlist on my channel. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. Okay so here's where we got to last time and we're going to do some texturing or colouring in. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to just show the simplest one today. And for this, I'm going to go across to the shading workspace. So when you click on this, you should be in material preview mode, which is just up here. That's different from rendered mode. If I click on that, you can see the mode with the lights and no background. Whereas material preview mode gives you an HDRI in the background so it lights your scene for you. However, it doesn't take into account the light you have in your scene. So this light here, for example, isn't showing any effect in this mode. So it's a good mode for just placing colors onto your objects. So if I click on the ground, for example, we can see in the shader editor down here that it has no material yet. So we've got this option for new. I'm just going to change across as well to the material properties over here. And you'll see that's pretty much the same as in here. So we've got a new option here and here. So if I click new, and I'm going to call this green, you can see it changes over here as well to green. So this information here is the information that's on the principled BSDF here. Now nodes can be a little intimidating to start off with, but when you're starting out, there's three main things that you need to think about. The base color, the metallic, and the roughness. So those are the only things you want to worry about when you're just starting out. The most obvious one is the base color, and we can click on the color here, and we've got the color wheel, and we can change it around here. So I can change it across the greens, maybe a touch greeny yellow, and I can bring the tone down on the side here. Now it doesn't give you a lot of space, but if I zoom into this and then click on it, it makes this all bigger. You've got more saturation the further out you go in the circle and then less as you go in. And then, like I say, the tone on here gives it more brightness or darkness. So probably around there and come across to here. Let's take a look at that, a nice sort of grassy green. Okay, so let's click on a different object. So let's click on this plant here. Give that a new material by clicking here or this time actually I'll try over here. So when I click new there, exactly the same thing happens. I get this principled BSDF shader here and I can zoom in on this and change the color nice and easily. I'll zoom in on this a bit so I can see it when I'm changing the color and I'll give this a slightly darker green this time, I think, somewhere around there. Okay, so we've got two colors in our scene, two types of green, and that's looking fine. But you can see this has quite a lot of shininess to it. And I don't think that's really working for this plant in this case. We can change that if I zoom out just a touch of the principal BSDF. So just down a bit, we've got the roughness and I can put the roughness all the way up and it gives it that nice rough feel. Or if I put it all the way down, it makes it look really shiny and glossy. You might want that, but generally for low poly work, we keep the roughness fairly high. It just gives a nice soft look. So I'm going to call this green dark as it's slightly darker than the other one. Now you can see it updated another one of my objects and that's because I pressed Alt D when I copied it. But I must have forgotten to do that when I copied these ones from here to here. And I actually wanted them all to be linked duplicates. So I can select these other ones and click one of the originals and press Control L to link object data. Now they've all got the same data, therefore they're sharing this material. Notice that the scale, rotation or movement doesn't change. It just copies all the other attributes. Okay, so slightly different. I want these paving slabs all to have a very slightly different color. So I'll click on one and press new material and I'm going to call this gray blue. Go to my base color, give it just an off white color there and fairly bright, so about there. And let's see what that's looking like. That's looking great. Okay, the next one, I'll press new. And when I click on the base color, in fact, it's overlapping my object. So I'll just move this across slightly, click on the base color again. I've got this color picker here. So I can use that to color pick this and it will have exactly the same color, but then I can change it very slightly and maybe give it a bit more towards the purples and call this gray purple. And this one here, new base color, the picker again, and pick the color from this one and I'll bring it towards the green slightly. So this is going to be gray green. And you can see every time I change the name here, it changes over here. Okay, now these tiles I think would be very helpful for some of my bricks as well. So let's click on one of the bricks and copy the color from here to there. So let's say I want this to be a purple brick. I can click on this brick here, shift click, 
this stone here and you can see that became the active object because it's got an orangey yellow outline and also the material gray purple popped up here to say what material this object has. I can now press Control L to link the materials. So you can see the purpley gray appeared there. And if I click on this, it's got the purpley gray material. So is this one. So it's linked the materials together. Now you don't have to do it like that. Let's say I click on this one here. You can come to this drop down menu here and I've got my gray purple there as well. Now it's important to note that these three objects are sharing the same material. So if I change this at all, all three objects are going to change. I'll undo that because I like my purple. The same for these ones here. They're all sharing the same material. So when I change it, it updates and they change. Okay, so I'm going to select a few random bricks and then click on this one last and control L and link that material. So they've all got that material now. I'm going to click a few more and click on this one last and copy the material with Control L. So you can see we're starting to color in using those materials. So just as one more example before I fill everything in, this piece of wood here, now that already has a material. It's called material. So that's the default material that comes with the scene and that must have been one of the first objects that I made. Now I could just change this or I can remove a material from an object by pressing this cross here and then I can easily add a new material there and I'll call this wood. I'll then change the color to a sort of browny color there, a little bit darker and bring up the roughness again. I think I forgot to bring the roughness up for these but it doesn't seem to matter too much. So we've got a nice sort of chocolatey wood there. I can then select all the wooden objects and then select this one last, control L and materials and then they're all that wooden color. Now it might be at that point that you think oh that wood doesn't quite work then you can just easily change the color here and make it maybe more saturated, less dark or more dark. That's up to you. Okay, so I'll just time lapse me going through texturing my house. This is all just the same process, but in a moment I'll show you how to do the window and the lamp with emission shaders. Okay, so we're almost there. We just need to do the window and the lamp. Now, if I click on the window, I'm going to create a new texture and that creates the principal BSDF, but we want to change that to an emissive material. So if I delete that and press Shift A to add and then shader emission, I can then plug this emission into the surface output, the same place the principal BSDF was, and I can change my color to sort of yellowy window color. I can then up the strength and it becomes more white Later on, I'll show you how you can make that sort of glow and look like it's emitting light. But for now, we'll just label this window light and I'll add it to this one as well. So select that one, select this one last with shift, control L and link materials. Now the lamp's slightly different because it's got an outside that we want to be black and these bits we want to be that emissive material. So first of all, we'll give it the black material that we've got already on the chimney. Now we need these inside parts to have that emissive material like the windows. In order to have one object with two different materials on it, you use the slots. The slots can be found here or up the top here. So if I click on the slots down arrow there, I can add a new slot. So you can see this blank area that it's got now. I can now add a new material from here to this blank slot area. So if I press the down arrow here, I can then, and I'm still in slot two, I can find my emission window light there and that's now in slot two and then slot one has the black. Now I can go into edit mode and choose which faces and luckily the faces I need are actually selected so I'll just go to face mode to make sure. I can then come to slot two here with the window light and you see these buttons here assign select and deselect so I can assign the slot two material to those faces. So I'm going to deselect all with alt a and just show you another function of this in the slots down here, or the same over here, we've got the same menus here, I can press on slot 2, which is the window light, and press select, and that will select those faces. I can now deselect, and let's go to the black, and press select, and that will select those outside faces. 
And if I wanted to change maybe this face here, I could click on that, click on the window light and press assign. I don't want to do that, so I'll click on the black and press assign. And it's back to the black. Okay, so that's basic texturing for now. In the next session, we'll talk about how to make this look really nice and atmospheric. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.